Hello, everyone, and welcome to my first live recorded episode of I've Got This Kid. I'm your host, Sharina Williams, excited podcaster, mother of two, homeschooler, wife of one, and the list goes on and on and on. You know, today I'm going to throw in there like COVID homeschool survivor, because that's a whole different kind of, that's next level stuff. That's like milestone, right? (laughs) I'm excited to be back with you guys for another day for another podcast. This is episode 15. Huge, right? We've had almost 700 listens and we've even we've even got Canada listening to us. So you know what, y'all? This show is nothing without you. These are your questions. These are topics that are brought up by you. This is your show. So keep sending in questions. Keep sending in comments. Keep liking and sharing and subscribing. And let's just change the trajectory of everything together, y'all. So today's topic, death to tantrums. Now, maybe I'm not sure how long ago it was, maybe a few weeks ago, up to a month ago. I don't remember. Um, I wrote a blog post about death to tantrums. And <laughs> when I wrote it, I just, I hope I wasn't offensive to anybody. I I never, like, it's never my heart's desire to be offensive, but to give you guys the truth and to debunk myths and for us to all do better together because as community, we learn from each other and we're better together. But I wrote this blog and I wrote it with, with you guys in mind. I wrote it with myself in mind and I wrote it because I just think that societally wise, we can all do better when dealing with this topic. So there wasn't necessarily a question around it, but I have been questioned over the years about how to deal with tantrums. Um, It's one thing that I definitely deal with in clinic during sessions. And it's something that I work with my clients a lot on. Matter of fact, I don't even work on speech and language goals until tantruming behavior is under control. Why? Let's unpack it today. So here's the deal, y'all. You have your little sugar. They're this cute, sweet little baby and they're adorable. They smell good and all you wanna do is protect them. And they only have one means to communicate their thoughts and their ideas to you. And guess what? It's through crying. They use crying to tell us when they're hungry, when they're when they're thirsty, when they've wet themselves, when they want to be inter- entertained and when they just whatever it is they need, they use crying as a resource. But while all this is happening, guess what? They're also picking up how to use language from you. Um, They're picking it up from different family members. They're picking it up in the house. And so eventually anywhere between, it depends on the kid, seven to 12 months, first words come. Once first words come, then you understand the first words and the little sugar is still using crying as a means to communicate. Why? Because it is a means for them to tell you what they need or what they want or when they're in distress. And at 12 months, when those first words come, they don't have quite enough language to communicate all their wants or all their needs or all their desires to you. So they're still using the crying. What happens is that we become so accustomed to the crying that we start meeting their needs and knowing what their cries mean. That's huge. You can even pick up your baby's cry out of other babies' cries. Like there's been times where I've been out in the community and I will hear my baby cry and I know that that's my baby. Why? Because it's my baby. It's a bond. It's a connection. It's it's what binds us together as, as one. And it's my job to meet that need when they're babies. What happens is around mm, 24 months when our sugar should have Roughly about 50 words. Now, if you've listened to the past podcasts or you've read anything on my social media accounts, whether that's Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, wherever it is, you guys know or should know by now, 18 months, at least 10 words. From there, I want your little sugar to be getting five to seven new words every week. So by two, they should have 50 words. Language boom has happened. And that's when I'm looking for, guess what? 
two word phrases. By the time your sugar has two word phrases, guess what? They really shouldn't need crying as much to get through the day. They should be relying on those words to get through the day. But what happens is because our babies are so smart and crying is a lot more effective, well, guess what they use? Mm -hmm, You got it, the crying. But it ends up turning into a tantrum. And, And that's when you see your little sugar on the floor or just beat red because you either told them no, no, thank you, or redirected a behavior, or or they just didn't feel like something was going their way. And that's when the, the tantrum behavior comes in. They're crying not because they're hurt, or not because they're in distress, or not because it, it has something to do with something that needs to communicate like stranger danger or something that's valid for crying, I hurt myself. Um, so that's what happens, is we have this, this growth shift, and I'm gonna repeat this again. Again, 24 months, our sugars should be using their language primarily to get through the day. If our sugar is starting to use crying and whining and tantruming or just going straight to tears to get their wants and needs met, just a tantrum. Guess what else? You ain't got to deal with that. So I'm going to tell you what you can do to deal with that and what it means. First, we're gonna unpack what a tantrum means because I know you guys are like, but they're crying and they're cute and they still smell like cookies. And yes, they do. They do, they do, they do. But, but I want you to ask yourself some basic questions. And this is coming straight from my blog. So if you want to go back and read it, by all means, please read it, okay? Or listen to me again, either or. I'm happy about both. All right, so is your sugar crying because they're hurt? If yes, please help them. Give them some comfort. Just love on them. Give them the security that things are going to get better. If it is not because they are hurt, then guess what, y'all? It's a tantrum. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a tantrum. Is your sugar crying because they are sick or in real discomfort? Hmm. Ask yourself this. If yes, please meet their need. If not, come on, say it with me. You get the gist now. Tantrum. Is your sugar crying because they're in pain? Not like um, I, my feelings are hurt or I'm sick and I don't feel good, but like pain. Pain can come from falling down. Pain can come from a belly ache. Pain can come even at their age because of gassiness. They don't always have the words to say, like, I have abdominal discomfort, right? If yes, again, please meet their needs. If not, tantrum. Is your sugar crying because they had a hard time expressing themselves or advocating for their needs? What does that mean? That means when they try to talk to you, there's something happening when they send that message and you're not receiving that message. Maybe their speech isn't quite articulate enough for you to understand what they're saying. Or maybe they're kind of still jumbling words together and it's kind of hard to understand what they're saying. Maybe, maybe, whatever the reason, you're not understanding what they're saying. And so now they're resorting to Tantra. Try to coach them through it. If that's happening, try to coach them through it. If not, send me a direct message and we will work through that. And I'll, I'll consult you on a little bit further as to what's going on there. Is your sugar falling apart because you told them no? If yes, hands down, tantrum. Mm. Is your sugar falling apart because you redirected their behavior? What do I mean by redirected their behavior? They were doing something. You told them to do something else and they didn't like that. They start crying. Guess what? Tantrum. This is my favorite one. And I love to see parents face when I say this to them in clinic. I love it because their expression goes from like distress to like, I'm being played. Is your sugar crying, but there's no tears and there's not like a tear duct issue that you 
know about. But they're like crying and you hear them like wailing and there's not a drop. It's like desert dry around that area or it takes a long time to get that one little shady tear down. Mm -hmm. Say it with me. Tantrum. Tantrum. Shake your head with me because that's what it is. And if you've never paid attention, I'm telling you, pay attention. Man, that was a lifesaver for me when my little ones were toddlers and they would go through that tantruming and they'd be whining. And the first thing I learned how to do, is there even a real tear? And then I start going down the list and seeing what's going on. And I apply that to clinic. Like part of that is clinical knowledge. Part of that is just mommy wisdom. Like if there's no tear and there again is no tear duct issue that you know about, it's a tantrum. Shake your head. They're they're getting you. So I've covered reasons to to understand the difference between like crying and tantrum. But I also need you to understand what a tantrum is. And, and maybe I should have told you that earlier, but I needed you to know or be able to discern or decipher like the difference between the two. I needed to share that first. So. Let's let's be clear about what a tantrum is. Manipulation. It is manipulation. Why is it manipulation? They're so cute and cuddly at that age. Why are they aren't they too young to manipulate? No, they're not too young to manipulate. Think about it. When they're little sugars and you take the little toy, you give them the toy and they throw it and then you pick it back up. And they and you give it to them and they throw it again. Like that's cause and effect, right? Those are cause and effect things. Tantruming is a cause and effect thing. If you don't give me what I want, then I'm going to tantrum. The effect is going to be that you're going to meet my need in that moment. That's manipulation. Are they doing it because they're being mean? No, they're not being mean. They're kids. They're learning still. And what's even cooler about the idea of tantruming and how you know it's real is because tantruming really gets bad and it really heightens. Guess around what age? 24 months to 36 months. You know, when people are like terrible twos, they're going through the terrible twos. Guess what's really happening? They're figuring out how to communicate with you and what's the best method. And so they're either going to use tantruming or they're going to use their words. I promise to goodness, I am saving so many households right now just based on that sentence alone. 24 months to 36 months Children are trying to figure out the best way to communicate. And if they feel like whining and tantruming is it because you've met that need time and time again, guess what? They're going to keep using that. And even if they have a full vocabulary, guess what they're going to resort to with when they want something from you? A tantrum. They do. Yes, they do. So like in my household, I had to run a tutorial like we have so much community around us. We've got me and my husband and then we've got my daughter, especially when my son was born. We have my daughter around and she's three years older than him. And so she wants to, you know, be other mama bear. And then we had two sets of grandparents around and an aunt and a host of other people around. It's crazy. And so I had to like run a tutorial on like what a tantrum is and what crying is and the difference between the two, because I was so concerned that my little ones were picking up on who they could use that behavior with, because again, it's manipulation and kids are smart and they know who to use it on and how to use it. And so they'll like pick and choose who they can use it on. Don't believe me? Try it out. One of the parents stop answering to them when they whine and cry when they're trying to get their way and other parent keep whining and crying and see after a week who that child is still using that behavior with. Because again, it's manipulation. And so they're going to keep using that as long as they can. Why? Because it's easy. It's easy. You don't have to worry about using words. You don't have to worry about stringing words together. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. You just have someone still coming like you were a baby and catering to your needs. The problem with that is as they continue to get older and use this as a means to communicate with the world around them, other people in the world around them don't 
want to deal with that. I don't care how lovable your sugar is. It's hard for teachers to get through the day if they have 15 kids all crying to get their wants and needs met. And I understand like we're on lockdown right now and we're distancing physically, but not socially. I hope you guys are still getting like some good house party time in and some Zoom time in to see other community. But keep in mind that this isn't forever. And eventually, whatever way we go back to being in the same space with others outside of our household, tantruming is still one of those things that's really difficult for the educators to navigate, for the babysitters to navigate. It's not a fun thing to have to deal with. Um, and, and if you want to keep this in mind, if you had 15 of your little sugars doing the same thing in front of you, tell me how that would feel. So I'm not just telling you this for your household. I'm telling you this because I want you to be in good community with your teachers. And I don't want your teachers and the preschool educators, you know, like giving the face when your baby comes because they have a vocabulary of 200 words, but they're still using crying to tell you what they need or they're falling out on the floor. So I just I want you to do this for me. And uh, I don't I don't want the tomato the tomato spirit to come. And that simply means you're going to throw tomatoes at me for what I'm going to say next. Okay. Now that we have that settled, you will not throw tomatoes at me or send me comments. Okay. Seriously. What I want you to do, parents, world changers, amazing people. Next time your sugar tantrums and you go through that laundry list and you know they're not hurt or in distress or in pain and all those other things, I want you to walk away. I want you to walk away from your sugar next time they tantrum on you. And not like walk away to a place that's just like unsafe Neverland. I'm talking about walk the other way or turn the other way. You can do one of these numbers. If they're right there. You get what I'm saying? We'll put one of these numbers. Straight face. No effect. No distress. Just don't even look their way. And the reason that I want you to do that, look away, say nothing, don't acknowledge, is because guess what what doesn't keep happening when you ignore? The tantrum. Yeah, it stops eventually. Um, Think about it like this. If we were in another country, let's think of a good one. Ooh, I want to be right now somewhere fun. I want to be in Italy right now. Like Corona free though. Like I don't want to die. Let's say we were in Italy and um, everybody spoke Italian. Like there was no English speaker around English speakers around none not one can't find them imagine me coming and trying to use my English with them over and over and over again imagine if everybody kept either not responding me or telling me they have no clue what I'm talking about or they just walk away from me because guess what the language I'm using it's not working I'm going to have to try something else. I'm going to have to learn Italian quick. Um, I'm going to have to get a translator. I'm going to have to do something like I'm going to have to use a different tool to get the people to understand me and for me to get my needs met and for them to help meet my needs. Same thing with tantruming. Your sugar is going to have to speak a different language. And I want you to help them speak a different language because it's not one of those things that necessarily goes away overnight. It gets progressively worse. And so the new language that you're going to speak is, I don't respond to tantrum. I speak English. I speak Spanish. I speak, you know, Mandarin. I speak Cantonese. I speak whatever I speak, but I don't speak to tantrum. Because tantrums is one of those things that transcends race. It transcends ethnicity. It transcends language. I've seen it in every child, not all children, but every nationality. I've seen it. And so I want you to get in your in your heart and in your mind that this is something that you're going to have to contain 
and how you respond to it and the fast or don't respond to it is going to dictate the outcome for how they try to communicate with the world around them. And what's even cooler about that is if you're not responding to tantrum, it makes their brain have to think about what do I need to say in this moment? You're helping them build their vocabulary. You're helping them build their communication and their social skills. Now you're a rock star because you've killed all these birds in one stone and you've stopped them from using wah, 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 wine, 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 roll around on the floor, turn red over something that they could have easily asked for or easily accepted your response to. So I want you to walk away. When your sugar calms down and they come to you, with some sense of I'm going to use my words. And yes, two-year-olds have common sense. Don't, don't underestimate those people. They are smart. They've got a lot of common sense. So when they come to you after the tantrum is over and they're calm and you've said nothing to them and you've kept calm because you've said nothing to them, you've ignored them, right? I want you to, to hear them out. And if it's a communication thing to where you can't understand what they're trying to tell you, Two magical words, show me. Show me what you want, show me what you need. That simple. It's totally that simple. Have them show you. If they try to go back to tantrum or to wine, I don't speak that language, I'm sorry. And you don't even have to make it a debate. It's not a debate, it's just what you don't do. I'm not responding to tantrum. I'm sorry, honey, as soon as you calm down, I'll be right here waiting for you. Stop it right there. Line drawn in the sand. So they'll know this point on, I'm not responding to tantrum. I'm not responding to that. I'm not dealing with that. And not only that, not only that world changer, I want you to know by you ignoring that tantrum, you give them again that opportunity to keep building up those five to seven words a week that they may not have built up if they were still using whining and crying to communicate with you. So I want you to think about that. Think about it going forth. Think about next time they they fall out and you just want to fix it. They're not an infant anymore. They're not helpless anymore. Not by toddler age. They're not help. They're not that helpless baby that needs you to answer to them in that same way to where when they were infants, they needed you. They genuinely needed you to come to their rescue and help them out. They needed that. But as a toddler with language, they don't need that kind of help anymore. They need you to be strong and they need you to not take the easy way out of just trying to quickly meet the need, especially now because you have so much time on your hand and everybody's socially isolating or socially distancing or distancing, however you want to call it. Like we can't be in community with the world right now, only our household. And that can be a lot. And so sometimes it's easier to take the easy way out, but long-term it's not. Because if I go into Starbucks one more time and I see an adult having a tantrum because their latte is not right. Or if I go out on the road and I'm driving and an adult gets mad at a car because they don't like, they couldn't handle that the car did something that they didn't like, it's an adult tantrum. That stuff doesn't go away. And as our sugars get older, if they can't handle life, they become adults who can't handle life. You gotta be able to handle redirection. You gotta be able to handle no. You gotta be able to handle real things that happen because everything is not going to go our way. It's just impossible. And I think in society now we're breeding our children to believe that we should give them everything and things should be easy and it should go their way all the time and they shouldn't have to have any hustle. But I'm telling you, our babies need some grit. They need some grit to get through life because everybody on the playground and in the workplace and on the college campus is not going to shape and form things for their favor. It just doesn't work like that. And that's that's real life. Like that's free wisdom right there that it's better to deal with that now instead of turning them over, you know, to just keep getting away with that and feel like the world around them is entitled to reshape everything for their benefit. 
I'm just saying. I'm I'm just saying. And that doesn't mean that you neglect your baby. That doesn't mean you don't love your baby. That doesn't mean any of that stuff. That means that you as a world changer are being intentional with how you shape your sugar and release them out into the world. And you're preparing them to deal with life as they go out into the world. And I'm still doing it with my children. My son likes to rage when he's mad at his sister. And guess what? It's a teachable moment. And we let him rage. Nobody responds to that. And then when he's done, we talk to him about it. And when our daughter doesn't get her way and she feels like she's going to fall apart, she knows nobody's responding to that. We're just not responding to that. And so we let them deal however they're going to deal. And then we let them come to us when it's over. And that's that's the way we've we've done it. And they know, they'll tell you too, like they ain't dealing with that. Like, and sometimes your G little sugar, they just need that time to get it out. It's nothing wrong with crying. There's nothing wrong with being upset. It's nothing wrong with, you know, having those natural raw emotions. But how we respond to that, if we're trying to coddle them through everything, that ain't it. That that ain't it. So I just, I want you guys to think about that. I know this was a hard one. I know, I know this was a hard one. And I know it probably felt like I was ranting at times. Who wants to see Sharina rant? I'm telling you. But I did, I had to, because you know what? We can all do better. Um, I can do better. You can do better. We can work together to do better. We can work together to do better for our house. We could do better to to help those, you know, when they're leaving our house. We we can do this. World changers, we got this. We really seriously got this. We just got to keep making tweaks as things come along because you know what? Nothing, nothing, nothing and nowhere along the way was there a parent handbook to give us all the tools that we need. And so that's why we rely on community. So I'm excited about you continuing to tune in, to figure out tips, to figure out tools, to listen to me go on my tirades from time to time. And I know today felt a little tirade-ish, but when you really think about it and take time to reflect on it, I haven't been wrong on this one. I ain't right about everything, but this one, I'm just saying. So y'all, until the next time, I had a wonderful time. Do not forget, like, subscribe, and share. Like my post on Facebook and Instagram. Share it. Why would you go to a restaurant? Okay, we ain't going to restaurants right now. Why would you listen to me and then keep all that knowledge for yourself? Share it with other people. We're trying to create a movement here. Share that stuff. Get it out there. Get the word out there. And let's just do this. Let's get better together. Let's learn together. Let's grow together. Continue to send in your questions. Also, if you do not know my website page, it is iheartspeechtherapy.com. For social media, you can find me on Facebook at Sharina Williams. Um, for Instagram, you can find me at I've Got This Kid underscore podcast. And you can also find me at Sharina Williams. LP. We didn't do two S's in that. So it's just Sharina Williams LP, but it really is Sharina Williams SLP. And you can find me on Twitter, Twitter. I can't even say it right. You can find me on Twitter at Sharina Williams SLP one. I believe that's right. I hope that's right. I don't know y'all. I'll be trying to remember this stuff. Hey, look, you can't be great at everything. I'm gonna try to get it next time. I'm gonna have it. I promise to goodness. I'm gonna have it. <laughs> And also look out for my uh, YouTube page, my live Q and A's live at five on Sunday. Those are going to start being on YouTube. And you know what? You guys have been sending in fabulous questions. Keep sending in those questions. Let's continue to work on this together. Let's get this, this parenting thing in order. Let's get this, this whole thing under control. We can do this y'all. We can homeschool better. We can parent together. We can do it all. We can even rant together every now and again. All right. Until the next time, y'all, seriously, take care. <laughs>